DJ Event Planner will change the way you manage and run your business. Streamline all of your procedures and software into one easy-to-manage system. DJ Event Planner, the ultimate online planning tool. Good morning, everyone. It is Monday morning, and today we're talking music with the one and only Nick Hahn. Good morning, Nick. Morning. How are you doing, John? <laughs> I'm doing well, doing very, very well. For those of you who are not familiar with Nick, you, a lot of you have seen him at the different DJ conventions. You've seen his face on, you know, in the booth at the different shows, or you probably have seen the email called Nick Nick's Picks from Promo Only. And I got to ask, though, before we get into the t- today's topic, I, w- I was going through and I was kind of looking at, at the, the email that just came out uh, that you guys sent out with the Nick's Picks. How do you go through and pick the, the different things that are in Nick's Picks? Um, well, it, it, it is somewhat limited because uh, the way the system's set up, I have to do something that's either all music video or all audio. And I started with music video um, about a year and a half ago, I think. I, yeah, it's been about... About a year and seven months, I guess. And, and since I've never changed, I've never changed over to audio because the um, most programs will play audio and video. And I feel like if I can give people video collection to to build upon, maybe they'll be more likely to to want to start doing video, which is what I did on my night. And uh, honestly, like it's just a matter of what I'm feeling. Sometimes I'll just go through all classics discs and be like, "Ooh, I haven't heard that in a while," or I'll, I'll browse one of our newer. Um, like alternative video release or urban video release to see what's on there that I think is, is interesting. I'm not trying to give people the no brainers like the new Drake song or a Katy Perry or, or a Lady Gaga. I'm trying to give them something that might spark their imagination for something they played in the past or might introduce them to a new artist. And uh, it's funny. I had um, a guy at Midwest DJs, uh, actually Jason Spencer, yeah. Uh, asked specifically for a request. And I was like, ah, it kind of goes against what Nick's picks is about, you know, but uh, I do take those into consideration because if somebody says, Hey, you know, what about this, uh, this misfits video, which I'm a sucker for that. I'd be like, Oh yeah, that's a great idea. I'm going to put that one on there. But uh, for the most part, like it, it truly is about, there is no agenda. There's no label pressure. There's no uh, promotions department pressure asking me, Hey, would you put this new artist in there for me? And, like, it's just more along the lines of, you know, I've got this little motto that I came up with a long time ago called uh, new or old, known or not, good music is good music. And uh, I feel that way. I, it bothers me that people won't just dance to stuff that they don't know all the time. You know, we, we come into society. So hopefully this introduces people to, to new music um, and artists they've never heard before or reminds them of catalog material that uh, they can use at their events as well. So. That's what it all started for. You got a couple of things. First off, if people want to get on that list and be able to get that email, where can they go to sign up for that? Uh, if you uh, sign up, uh, well, you have to be a promo only subscriber um, to, re- to receive it. But uh, if you want, like a free trial for a month of promo only, uh, that would include the next picks. And you just email us at promo at promo only.com. So um, and we'll set you up for a free trial. Um, if you're already an existing subscriber and you're unaware of Nick's Picks, you just go to your charts uh, tab, charts and playlist tab, and I'm all the way down at the bottom. Um, and it's updated once a month, but got to download it that month because once it's those tracks are out of there, they're gone. They're, they don't stay in your player like everything else does. So just in my chart or any any of the charts, those, those tracks are um, – uh, temporary. So you do need to download those each month if you want to, to add those to your library. If you don't, you, you just, they're, they're gone. gone. And that's in the pool player for those of you who are, when, you, when Nick is referring to that, if you right. are, are getting the promo only and such, then you're familiar with all that world. You mentioned no artist pressure to be on that list. So what happens if there's this one particular artist that you happen to know very well and she's like, hey! <laughs> 
she she is definitely uh, you're referring to my wife Britt Daly and uh she's very who's, who's got some scary talent she's very very talented she does not get she does not get a green light just because she's my wife and there she will tell you straight up uh, there are songs of hers that I'm just like ah, I'm not feeling this uh I do know where I live and who I live with so it's never like ah, I hate this track it's garbage <laughs> uh, but uh there, there's I mean be honest, like there are very few songs of hers that I don't really, really like. And sometimes it's hard for me to to, under, to know if I'm being 100% objective or it's just that I'm so impressed by by her yeah. as a songwriter and a singer and a musician. So, yeah, but no, she doesn't get a she doesn't get a pass just because it's her. Okay? <laughs> like I have to dig it. If I don't dig it, it's not going on. There. <laughs> <laughs> fun, fun. You mentioned a little earlier Midwest DJs Live, and that's really what today's topic. I wanted to kind of dig into the same topic you were you were uh, introducing at Midwest DJs Live, where you were talking about about the the whole world within uh, music and such, where you know there's such a, a amount of illegal music sharing and or music buying actually going on. Uh, for those who are, are wondering and in, in such and have no idea of what we're talking about because they've gone out and they're, they're buying their music each and every month from a service that's online. You know, kind of tell us a little bit about what's out there and what, why knowing is important. Um, <clears throat> wow. All right. I'm, I, I don't know how organized this will actually be. but I'll Let's just, we're going to throw it out there and then they can start through it after we're done. <laughs> Well, let me just first say that um, as a working DJ who's been doing this for 17 years, um, I understand that it's hard, um, if not impossible, for the average DJ, even someone who's been doing it for a long time, to separate uh, those who actually have, who are licensed from those who are just basically the guy selling a, a Craigslist hard drive um, that has a nice presentation in the form of a website. Um and then there's certain services that are gray area. They, they have permissions from uh, promotions department, but they aren't technically licensed. Um, in fact, um, in, in a few minutes, I'll bring up a, a particular instance where that kind of bit us in the bottom a long time ago. Um, but basically, <clears throat> there are only a handful of services in the United States that are licensed and have permissions from the various record labels to service all the audio content that they service. Um, a couple of warning signs. Any company that uh, claims worldwide distribution to DJs uh, is suspect. First of all, even iTunes, Amazon, um, these Spotify, they don't have worldwide distribution rights. They have to get distribution rights within uh, the particular territories, the US, Canada, uh, UK, Europe, that's one entire section. Um, if you were going to do Australia, you'd have to do Australia specific. Um, and we don't. We, 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 we have Canada, we do US, and we have UK, Europe. And those are three separate offices, and we don't cross um, promote to those people in terms of, hey, if you're in England, you can subscribe to Promo Only US. You can't. Um, you can subscribe to Promo Only UK, Europe, but you can't subscribe to Promo Only US. And that's uh, keeping in with the uh, distribution deals that are pretty much in place for everyone. So there's certain services out there that says, we're the world's, uh, we'll, we'll service anybody in the world, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I can't really do that, not legally, although certain companies may have uh, the rights to. Uh, there's a couple of companies, there's a, a, a company in Canada that had um, distribution rights in uh, for video in Canada and in Europe. And they're working still to get distribution rights in the U S but it's not as easy as most people think. So, um, that's your first clue. Your second clue is back catalog audio. Um, and that means catalog, and that means audio not serviced within the last 12 months, uh, record labels service promotional pools to get their music, their new music, their new releases to as many people as possible, as quickly as possible to try to drive, uh, artists to uh, the higher chart positions and to stimulate uh, interest in seeing them at concerts and, and whatnot. Um, I, I always give this, people are like, well, why don't y'all have catalog audio? This, this company over here has it. And I'm like, well, that company over there isn't doing the, um, what they're supposed to be doing. Um, and, uh, you know, our customers come first. We're not going to put our business and our companies, our, our customers' businesses in jeopardy by being potentially shut down by the record labels. And a long time ago, a long time ago, uh, we introduced something called the Platinum Series. And the yes. Platinum Series was um, 
It was a huge hit with mobile DJs, uh, club DJs alike. It had everything that a DJ could need to get their business up and running. You could do any type of gig with the Platinum Series. It was a 40 disc set here in the U.S. that spanned everything from you know Glenn Miller Orchestra up to 50 Cent, and uh, and they were nothing but hits. Everything on there. We even had sound effect discs, and we had uh, you know like Jaws theme songs and everything else. And um, actually, we got dinged by the RIA for that, and we ended up having to settle out of court um, because. While we had permissions from the record labels and the promotions department, we did not have the licensing. And at that point in time, um, the owners were unaware that they needed it in the first place. Right. In fact, ETV actually brokered the deal for us, for those of y'all that remember ETV. Um, and uh, unbeknownst to us, it was a learning lesson. It was something that cost us a, a, a good deal of money. And the owners are confident they could have beaten it in court, but it would have cost a lot more money than what we settled for. Right. But we learned a lesson that we haven't uh, we haven't forgotten since then, and that is, you know, catalog material can only be serviced through licensing of music videos. Otherwise, the catalog material itself to license is, is too expensive. It wouldn't be cost effective for the DJ. It's still it would be more convenient for the DJ, but not cost effective. Like um, you, you can still go to Amazon and buy those those individual tracks or buy greatest hit CD um, online cheaper than we would be able to provide it for you and still make a profit. Mm -hmm. um, so we don't do it. That's why ERG doesn't do it. That's why Prime Cuts doesn't do it. That's why X Mix doesn't do it. That's why uh, Funky Mix and, and uh, Ultimix don't do it. These, these are things that if we were allowed to, look how long we've been in business. This is 25 years this month and we wow. have catalog content i mean we have the second uh largest video library in the world second only to viacom after buying out wolfram and etv um if, if we could sell the audio that we have in in addition to the video i mean we would totally do it especially if we could just give it away it's no skin off our heads to be competitive with these companies who aren't doing things the, the right way um we would totally do it and as would our the competitors that i just mentioned they would also do the yeah. exact same it's frustrating when we get a customer calling us up and, um, you know, inquiring about why we don't do this. And, and it's hard to point out to them, hey, you know, um, I, you know, these guys over here are doing one thing and it's just because they're doing it and they're not being shut down. People are like, well, they must be legit. Well, um, <clears throat> Groove Shark was a prime example of somebody that stayed seven or eight years in legal battles in the background with um, the record labels and people are like, Oh yeah, they're, they're not just because people are not getting shut down the second that they jump up. Doesn't mean that the record labels are don't know about them. And it also doesn't mean that they're, they're, they're legal. Sometimes these guys, the, uh, <clears throat> the, uh, how, how do I put this? It's better to ask for forgiveness than beg for permission. And that seems yeah. the way that a lot of people operate their business now they feel like they, if they get enough uh interest in their business then they can go to the record labels and say all right give us a deal now that we're legit we want to be legit now um so you know give us you know something that 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 works and the record label comes back and they're like well, we're going to give you the same thing that we've given prom cuts or or top hits or, or erg or promo only and they're like well you know our our business isn't structured to handle that and they're like well we we have um most favored nations clauses with these other companies. So to be legal, you got to be on this. And then they right. just fall this out in court um, or behind the scenes with the lawyers for as long as they can until they either get shut down uh, like eighth wonder did. Um, and, uh, or and then they try to reopen like eighth wonder did under a, a different name. Um, and, and then they go through the whole process again. And uh, it, it's really, it's frustrating for companies like us who, you know, don't mind legitimate legal competition um, because it's hard to compete when you, you have no overhead. When you don't have that overhead, when you're just a couple of guys with a server um, and, you know, selling $20 subscriptions and it's like, guys, you know, if you're going to, if you're going to pay this money, why not save the money and illegally download it yourself? Cause they're not, they're not doing things the right way. Yeah. Um, you'll notice that all the companies that I mentioned across the board, um, pretty much have a fairly similar price structure. Um, we didn't call each other up and go, "Hey, Jim Weiss at Prime Cuts, uh, what are you going to sell? You know your your subscription for? Because I'm going to put mine right around there." And you know that's not how it is. It, it just basically boils down to there's not a lot of leeway. It's kind of like when you go and buy uh, um, 
uh, a MacBook Pro, that MacBook Pro is going to be pretty much the same no matter where you where buy. You go, yeah. Some price protection there. So, um, you know, there's the different ways to tell these guys and I'm not, I'm not back. Like, again, I'm not bagging on anybody using these. I don't blame folks for sometimes you actually have to go outside um, your comfort zone to get the things that you need to, to service your clients and your customers. Um, and some of these services, uh, you know, are taking, they're doing uh, rips from Dat Piff, which is a hip hop mixtape site. And a lot of these hip hop artists will allow um, people to download these singles that haven't even been released yet because they're trying to make their money on their live shows. So, um, you know, sometimes, I mean, that's always been a struggle for promo only is having hip hop, you know, when it's available, but that's because we do things the legal way. Sure. Um, but then again, the funny thing about hip hop is the artists themselves don't always care. Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They're like, yeah. we don't, it's not, we need, we want to get more people, you know, listening to it. this new 21 Savage record than we care about selling singles. Um, and being married to a singer songwriter, I understand why, you know, the people aren't paying artists what they used to and tying into the question that you asked why it's important. Um, people like my wife, um, humble brag, sorry, folks. Um, she had a number one dance radio hit. Now it was only number one for one week last year till the chain smokers knocked her out. But um, her and Morgan Page and the Addictions, along with JCO, uh, had a number one record. And uh, we were really excited for her. You know, it, it was a big deal, um, ego boost wise and, 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 and inspirational wise. But when um, <clears throat> we started getting checks from ASCAP and BMI act, after having millions of spins online and uh, terrestrial and, and satellite radio combined, it really didn't end up being a lot of money. In fact, uh, I make more money in two weeks here at Promo Only than the first check was. So, and I don't make, I mean, don't get me wrong, Pete and Jim are, are generous and they pay yeah. me fair wage, but you would think with something that had that much notoriety um, and that much love that it, it would be a little bit more of a, a paycheck just based on, you know, what you're led to believe as you're growing up. It's not true. Artists don't make a lot of money on music anymore. Music has been so devalued. You'll spend $7 on a shot at Jameson at your local bar, $5 for a, a, a coffee at Starbucks, but to part with 99 cents for a song that you're going to use over and over again, it's just, you know, it, it, there's something about it for folks. And, um, you know, I, I think a lot of DJs, myself included, were led to believe that, Oh, we're tastemakers and we, we make, you know, we, we help sell their records and th this is true. But, um, uh, uh, that doesn't mean that the tools that we use, we shouldn't compensate the, the, the manufacturers of those tools. Uh, in this case, being the artist and the labels. And typically, I'm going to tell you right now, if it comes down to the artist losing money or the label losing money, it's going to be the artist every time. Yeah. Find a way to shortchange them. So folks like my wife, um, who she works at Promo Only as well as our um, uh, creative director, um, she continues to have to work at Promo Only, um, which she enjoys and she loves. Um, but um, for her to be able to follow her dream to do that would require – uh, a lot more risk, a lot more uh, of her own money and her own time and, um, and travel. And it would take away from our family and, and everything else. And um, so when you, when you don't support the artists, um, we get what we have right now. I mean, I know a lot of DJs complain about, you know, the state of hip hop or even the state of pop or the state of dance being what it is. But, you know, these, the more creative folks, you know, have to move on to, yeah. to pay their mortgage. So, um, you know, we're stuck with, you know, the same people writing the same songs, making the same money, and it's an endless loop of, you know, mediocrity in some cases. I mean, we have a lot, there's a lot of talented artists out there, and going back to Nick's pick, that's what I try to expose those folks for. I'm not trying to, to blow up Future or Drake any more than they already are, although they have plenty of tracks that are great, but uh, some of these other artists deserve to make a little bit of, uh, of money, and they deserve some recognition, and, um, you know, uh, this is how we can, you know, by, by subscribing to a service that is trying to do the right thing uh, legally within the um, <clears throat> music industry, you're helping support somebody else's dreams as they're helping support yours. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I think all that, that is important. Um, but yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's basically the rundown of the, the things that stick out in my mind the sure. most for why it's important and how you can tell. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
you, you, and I'm on a tangent a little bit because you, as you were talking about uh, you know, the way an artist makes money in in today's world, you know, it's different than it was, you know, twenty some years ago. How does someone, you know, if they're an aspiring artist uh, like like Britt is, she's is, she's developing such her her skills. I mean, where is the ultimate spot that you're trying to get to to make money? Is it just having a, a gazillion listens all the time, or are there other ways? Because you know, as DJs, we probably aren't aware of um, how they pay their bills. In essence, well, I mean, a lot of them. Uh, let me start first with how the the rec- record labels first um, uh, start looking at artists in the first place. A couple of years ago, we were sitting in on a radio panel at the Winter Music Conference, and uh, it was uh, moderated by our own promotions department uh, head, Carrie Vance. Carrie used to be the uh, head of promotions at Virgin Records before he came and worked for us uh, out of our New York office. And, and basically, he works records for radio. He goes and he talks to the mix show DJs and the program directors and music directors about particular songs that the, the labels or the artists hire him to go and talk to them about. It's not payola. This is, you know, he goes and he gets feedback from them. He encourages them, hey, um, this is a great song. You should add this to rotation and give sure. me your feedback. Um, and that's what he does. <clears throat> when Carrie goes and talks to the labels, though, the labels have a, and this is this is funny because um, I've gone with him a few times and I was unaware of it until I went, but labels nowadays, <clears throat> um, you know, as I'm sitting in on that, 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 that panel and they're talking about how much they love music. Music is everything to us. We want everything for our artists, and, and I'm sure that's true. But about three minutes later in the conversation, some guy, I'm not going to mention his name, said, we wouldn't even talk to Macklemore and Ryan Lewis until they had a million hits on YouTube. I don't know if you know how hard it is to get a million hits on YouTube, but it's not easy unless you're using a social media influencer's website um, or you just, you know, you just have this stroke of luck. It's, it's fairly difficult uh, to achieve that. And it made me wonder, it's like, how much do you really love music? If that's the case, you yeah. know, they, you wouldn't even talk to them until they had a million views, but thrift shop was a, a, was a great song, a song that I was already playing uh, at my night in Tampa before it ever got major label consideration. And um, it just kind of bothered me. And then, you know, as Carrie and I are going to these record label meetings, I start finding out, you know, what, what the problem is is the labels aren't making money from sales anymore and they still have to pay the bills as well. They got to pay the guy that's sweeping the halls, yeah. you know, the guy that's only making 10, 10, $15 an hour living in New York city. You know, that's, um, so it, it affects them. So basically what they were doing is, um, they're counting on these 360 deals with artists. So, um, that 360 deal means that we're going to take money from you merch. We're going to take money from you, um, from, album sales, single sales, concert tours, um, licensing in TVs or movies for any of your tracks that go out. Um, and how they negotiate that is up to them. Um, but that those different ways, artists can do that on their own as well. Brit has had um, Running Wild, that same, that same track, got licensed for a show, um, some ABC show. I can't remember what it was. But what was the name of that show? Guilt, some ABC show. I don't know. It was called Guilt. I don't know if it was online or whatever, but Freeform Channel. Okay. So uh, anyway, uh, she got licensed for that. She wrote a track for Carmen Electra a few years ago. That made so much money for her in comparison. Not, you know, still not not buying a new car off of it, but she made a lot more money because Carmen Electra was able, because of her celebrity status, was able to perform that on the Wendy Williams show, the Ellen DeGeneres show, uh, New Year's Eve with Dick Clark. So because of the audience that was, she was hearing the sync license for television was humongous Sure. Um, in comparison. So that's a way merch is always a great way for artists to make money. Um, um, they still make money, you know, selling on Bandcamp. Um, uh, I, I actually, if you're uh, out to DJs out there, if you're looking for cool, unique stuff that your record, your whatever record pool you're subscribed to, um, isn't servicing. I love Bandcamp. If you're a music nerd and you want to f- discover some cool new bands that nobody's ever heard, and you want to have people come up and literally ask you um, what that song was because Shazam has stolen all that, um, go to Bandcamp. I mean, there's so many great acts. And then on top of it, actually, Know and Love are already selling their stuff digitally on Bandcamp and not just as MP3s. A lot of them will sell 
uh, their music in wave and flack and different audio file formats mm-hmm. that you want along with bonus stuff. I mean, you can buy the, if you're a punk fan and you like the dwarves, you can buy the entire dwarves catalog for $44 on Bandcamp. It's amazing. Hmm. So anyway, um, you know, they, they're still selling their music, their merch, um, touring, obviously, if you can do that, but it's very expensive to tour. And it's funny. I just went to see agent orange, um, with a couple other punk bands, um, not too long ago. Um, and, uh, the other punk bands, I'm not going to name their names cause they might be <laughs> not suitable for sure. names themselves are a little anyway, but these bands are legendary. So I went to see these bands and I paid, uh, I think I paid $20 for the ticket and, uh, it was at, <clears throat> uh, a little place here in town called Will's pub and Will's pub probably has the capacity for 150 people. There's probably a hundred people there. At twenty dollars a ticket, that's two thousand dollars to yeah. split between four bands, their 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 roadies or merch guy, which more than likely are the same people. But these people, I mean, this is Agent Orange. These other bands are known bands, bands that you've you've heard about. So two thousand dollars split up between basically twenty people to feed, transport, and house for a single evening. You know how much money do you think they're actually making? You know what I mean? So. You know, people complain about concert prices, but man, you know, like I can see that when you're going to see the Rolling Stones and they're charging, you know, you know, three hundred dollars for nosebleed tickets, and you know, it's a full stadium. But man, these local bands, these mid-tier bands, it's hard. Touring That's... doesn't really pay the bills, so um, you, you got to support them as much as you can wherever you can, not just on the tour, but buying their music or buying through a legitimate uh, record pool, buying a T-shirt, you know, and then don't be afraid to hit share and stop hitting thumbs down. Stop hitting thumbs down on YouTube videos, people. It's just rude. It's not, if you don't like it, move on. You know, it's like a, it's like a political fo- post on Facebook. Don't engage. You know what I'm saying? If you don't like it, just keep on moving. You know, don't, don't waste your time. And, and the thumbs down, you know, thumbs down, you can have a fat, I can tell you right now, you can have 4,000 thumbs up and 12 thumbs down. And those 12 thumbs down matter more to an artist than the 4,000 thumbs up. Right. It really does. There's something inside us that wants to please everybody. So at, at the very least, stop clicking thumbs down. Unless I give one, one case. If somebody says, check out this new Foo Fighters video and you go to the thing and it says new Foo Fighters video and I click on it, it's somebody else's video. Mm-hmm. And they're just trying to fish you to get, then you can give them a thumbs down all day long. I don't like being fooled and wasting my time listening to something that I wasn't expecting. Yeah. But, and, and that's definitely out there, unfortunately. Yeah. And then I also encourage people, if you actually know the artist or you're a fan, share their posts, like their posts, comment on their posts. Every single action that you do on their posts actually matters. Same thing with the disc jockey news. You know, if you're watching this right now and you support John Young and disc jockey news and what him and Rob, um, his wife have accomplished your wife, not his, Rob's yeah. wife. Um, you know, over these years, show some support. Even if you don't have time to walk, watch the video, like the video, save it, come back, watch it later, share it with your friends. There's a lot of information in these videos that people can use. Um, and it is about helping the folks who are trying to help you. You know what I mean? Like, um, so there's not a lot of difference, honestly, between what you're doing and what my wife is doing. You just, it's just a different, <laughs> yeah, really. It, it, different goal, you know, or it's a different media. You're selling a different product. Basically she's yeah. selling, you're selling information and knowledge. Yeah. So something that DJs could use. Yeah. <laughs> very similar in many, many ways. Uh, Nick, I want to just a couple more minutes here. I uh, don't want to take up too much of your time today. Um, recently I want to talk a little bit about MP3. And, and I was wondering if that's going to be something that's going to affect uh, what promo only does now that we've heard this this whole hubbub about the MP3 world. And Glenn, Glenn actually was the one who turned me on to the article. He shared it and it's like, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Uh, for those of y'all don't know who he's referring to, Glenn uh, Irvin is our, our sales manager here or um, by the title he prefers, director of awesome. Um <laughs> <laughs> And Glenn's been a DJ uh, way longer than, I mean, pretty much anybody in the building other than uh, the two owners. Um, and Glenn has been working here at Promo Only Forever. He's been our writer. He is our rock when it comes to, you know, talking to DJs, him and Ricky both of Amari, Kim, Heather. Um, got a great customer service staff and then our IT staff. But, but Glenn um, is also very active in Facebook, and he came across this article before I even saw it. 
before Digital DJ's Tips posted. And uh, the creators of the MP3 uh, said that the MP3 is dead. And uh, we say long live the MP3. Um, because this is basically the way I understand it. The MP3 patent is over with. Yeah. Um, and uh, for us, it's not as big a deal. We will continue to service our songs in 320-bit rate MP3 and which no other service does as Apple lossless M4A. People are like, I don't use an app. You don't have to use an Apple. Uh, any, pretty much any, we, I don't know of a music software program that won't play M4As at this point. Maybe the CDJ 2000s. Um, I'm not sure if Rekordbox supports you know, M4As or not. I should probably look that up. Um, and that's my fault for not doing so. I was going to say, there's but, probably uh, four people in the chat room who are typing right now yeah, saying, yeah. yes, it does, or no, it doesn't. Okay, I don't know. I'm sorry. But uh, we, we, we do offer that right now. We have no plans to change. Uh, I don't think that Apple um, or Amazon have any plans to necessarily, um, I mean, they're, they're already servicing an AAC format. Um, for me, like, can you hear a difference? Um, anything below 320 MP3, I'm not putting on my system. Although I can tell you right now, I've had people play 128 for me on a big system. And I'm like, I don't really, I'm not an audiophile. Yeah, right. Uh, so, but some people are, and some people can hear that. So I'm not going to sit here and say, Oh, you're, you're, you're exaggerating. I'm not. I'm just saying that you can hear something that I can't. Um, but I, I try to err on the side of caution and I use the, the highest quality file available to me for my gigs. But if 320 MP3 is all I have, and that's all I have. Yeah. Um, that being said, by the way, I do buy from Amazon. I do buy from Beatport. In fact, I buy a lot from Beatport. I buy from iTunes when I need to. Um, and those are all legitimate sources. They're not licensed for public performance. And Dr. Drax will probably kill me because he's he's very honest about public performance stuff. <laughs> but I have yet to have heard a single solitary person get in trouble for legally purchasing from a legal source like Amazon and DJing in public can get in trouble for playing that. So I'm sorry. It's a little off topic, but I know that's a, that's a, another question folks have an uh, awful lot out there. That is, there is a, there is a, um, <clears throat> there is talk about that and I've never heard that, but I will say this. If you think that buying music from illegal sources or downloading will not come back and bite you at some point in time, you're, you're, you're taking a risk. Now, I don't know how, where you live or whatever else, what, what type of risk that is. Um, but I have at least once a month, a district attorney from some city uh, calling me, asking me for verification about somebody's music purchases through promo only because there's a court case that they're involved in um, about illegal music in some capacity. And people are like, oh, yeah, yeah. okay. You've got a disgruntled employee who left your business. He's like, oh yeah, definitely. He gave all of us. He had one subscription to, you know, this dubious service. And not only did he only have one subscription, but he shared that one subscription with his 12 DJs. Yep. You're not supposed to do. We're aware that people do that, but you know, I can't police everybody. Yeah. So um, anyway, you're going to get told on and it's not going to be by somebody like me. It's going to be somebody, you know, it's going to be somebody who doesn't like you in the market. It's going to be somebody who doesn't, uh, want to see you succeed. So, uh, yeah, uh, yet another reason to maintain a sense of, cause there are what well, I guess what the kids like to refer to as haters. Yep. Um, uh, <laughs> who want to see you do poorly. So, um, anyway, sorry, I got a little off topic. No, uh, good stuff. <laughs> good stuff, Nick. Well, we're going to wrap things up. Uh, Nick, I want to make sure that you can get back to your, your stuff today. Uh, thank you for your time today. If people want to find out more information, where can they go to check out the whole promo only world? You can go to promoonly.com or you can email us at promo at promoonly.com uh, for more information and for that free trial. Um, also, if you're an existing subscriber and there's a package that you haven't tried, like you're an audio subscriber, but you'd like to try some video, email us. We'll set you up with a free trial of video. We'll just add it on your subscription for the month. Um, yeah, that's it. John, John thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, always appreciate uh the, the love that you've shown us and yeah uh, well thanks thanks for being on some good information today and uh, gang we'll be back uh, later tonight with our 10 o'clock show with the dj and tv crew so we'll catch you uh look for the links in the description below thanks okay. thanks man